I was always targeted for being what they said at the time different, which was effeminate and brown and um, an exotic, really. Was that because of your location when you grew up, or your your um, I don't know your sort of cultural background, the the times as well. Yes, I think very much it was to do with the mores and the attitudes of the times. But I mean, imagine the ignorance of people, of grown ups, imposing those kinds of abuses mm. on a small child in development at an impressionable age. I mean, what kind of normals were these people supposed to be? How normal is that kind of behaviour when you are calling a six-year-old a queer, a packy, a nigger, a faggot, and Nancy and this is a supposed civilized society with civilized people in this is the normative that we're supposed to accept and take I mean it's just berserk to me what were your feelings then when you're called these names and uh, who was calling you those names? I mean, oh, well, it would come from the family, it would come from outside of the family, it would come from complete and utter racist strangers on the street. Um, it came, you know, from all levels, as it always has done. Mm -hmm. you know, not, these are not just pertinent to me, but a great many people who were um, of a specific time you know, mm -hmm. and um, so it came from, you know, the ostracism, the flat, the ridicule came from all sides, all levels, and it seemed to have come constantly at times, and then there were bouts of, um, uh, or, you, you know, uh, non-experiencing uh, this sort of thing, um, but it's always been there. You know, it's always been something that you've expected to happen, you know, and even though you expect mm -hmm. something, uh, you don't always um, uh, get used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, why should you get used to it? Mm -hmm. Because your, your adversaries, they ultimately become your best gurus, your best teachers. And uh, if you've had a lifetime, of having to deal with people's uh, ignorances and prejudices, um, then you know you either go under mm -hmm. or you become a very strong weapon. You know, either physical or a verbal pugilist in the end. And I've had to become both mm -hmm. on many occasions, and because I see how how transparent people are in the motivation. I mean, we know for a fact that homophobia stems from the perpetrators' feelings of being the same. Because I've always said that mm. homophobes are nothing but big closet queers themselves. So can you tell me about your escape from Grimsby and um, your, your sort of career in music, within music? Yeah, well, it was really rather an escape, you know, from this dull parochial fishing town, even though um, it was known as Great Grimsby in the 60s when I was a small child because um, it was the biggest fishing docks in the whole world at one time and mm -hmm. just instantly known internationally and um, so it was just a huge place whereas I believe now only a quarter of the uh, fishing industry is there. Um, yes, yeah, so it was a bit of an escape, and it wasn't so much, uh, well, yes, it was an escape, and um, it was also like bigger cities calling me, mm -hmm. you know, it was all, almost as if the bigger cities were saying, if you come to a bigger city, you will find more diversity, um, you will uh, 
in a strange way, big cities tend to protect oddities and odd people and freaks, if you like. Freaks not a bad thing if you're celebrated. <laughs> I always thought the onus was on the orthodox, conservative, moral majorityist mm. mind. It was never the the onus never lay with the creative artist energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it was yeah. never there. You know, it was always with the bigot. The problem is always with the bigot, actually. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? The problem is always mm -hmm. with the bigot. They actually. live in self-terrification of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and they will always use somebody mm -hmm. else as a punch bag for their own neuroses. Because this is what we live on, a traumatised globe mm -hmm. of neuroses. So when somebody levels something at me, out of the blue, mm. I know instantly that it is a reflection, a transference of their own sickness. And quite frankly, I have come to the conclusion and understanding that just because somebody is a heterosexual, it does not make them special. All you can be is stand in the truth of who you are, have a s develop self-awareness, cultivate self-awareness, and just allow yourself to be. Moreover, do as much good as you can while you're here without the need for imaginary sky gods. Just live as best mm. you can and do as good as you can for everybody, but let it start with you, because it's all an inside job. Your reputation is in the hands of others, but your character and your spirit is in the hands of yourself. <laughs>